heart. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, let's do the communion. <clears throat> Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your body and your blood represented by the bread and the cup. We thank you, Lord, for this uh, covenant meal that we're about to take that just signifies the proclamation of our faith. God, that uh, we are in covenant with you through your body and through your blood, through your death, through your resurrection. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and uh, Lord, because we're in covenant with you, hallelujah. We have received all of these covenant promises listed in this word. We thank you for that. God, we thank you for the covenant promises we have. Lord, we thank you for this bread that represents your body that was broken and beaten so that ours could be made whole. Lord, as we take this bread today, we are declaring that we are uh, in blood covenant with you, that we are one with your body, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we receive, as we take this bread, we receive everything, your broken, beaten body that bore the curse has gotten us. We receive it this morning. Hallelujah. As you take the bread, receive your healing, receive your deliverance from sickness and the curse today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this cup. Represents your blood, Jesus, that was uh, shed to redeem us from the curse, to pay for our righteousness. And through this shed blood, Lord, uh, you paid for everything that we have now. Healing, power, authority, righteousness, wisdom, provision, your blood paid for it. Lord, as we drink this cup, we, we declare that we are one with your blood. That your blood, that uh, the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. This blood represents your life, Jesus. And as we drink this today, uh, we declare we are one with your blood. We are one with your life. Your life and our life has been mingled together. We, we now have your life. Hallelujah. And so as we drink this, Jesus, we receive, uh, we receive your life today. Hallelujah. That blessed life, that Zoe life. Hallelujah. As you drink the cup today, receive his life into you. Receive his life. Receive, receive his life of health. Receive his life of wisdom. Receive his life of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive his life into your mind. Receive his life into your organs. Receive his life into every one of your cells. Receive his life into your uh, into your marriage, your relationships. Receive his life today. Hallelujah. So let's drink this. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get into uh, the word here today. Uh, we are uh, dealing with, uh, we're, we're in our fourth uh, teaching on um, spirit, soul, and body. Um, hallelujah. 
our fourth teaching here today, and we're going to get in here and, and talk about some some powerful things. Uh, I wish the whole church knew this and understood this. We'd be a lot more powerful church. Uh, but uh, it's coming. More of the church is understanding this. Uh, there's a, been a revolution of just right teaching from what I can see in the body of Christ. And I, th- I think it's an awesome, I think that's the move of God that we need today is a, a really an awakening to, to, to the truth about who we are. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, we have been uh, saying in here, and let's review this one more time, that we are a three-part being. Amen. Or you could say a triune being. And what we've been saying is the real us is not the physical us. Amen. The real us is not the physical us. Um, The real us is actually a spirit being. All right. And we've been saying that we are, uh, the real us is a spirit being that possesses a soul, the mind, will, and emotions. And then we function in a body. So, To correctly see yourself and understand who you are, what you have to understand about yourself is the real you is a spirit being that can think, feel, and choose, and he expresses himself through the body in this physical earth. Um, The only reason that you really need a physical body is is so that you can function in the earth. Uh, The physical body, it just allows the spirit being to express itself in the earth. Without this physical body, you couldn't uh, touch me, you couldn't hear me, you couldn't see me, all right? Uh, And so, uh, now, we said last week, if I could take the real you, the spirit you, out of your body and somehow stand you up next to your physical body and you could see the spirit body, uh, the spirit you would look very similar to the physical you. Um, the only thing is the physical you, the body, would be lifeless. It would be dead because uh, the body is like a coat. We said the, bi- the body is like your earth suit. If I put a coat on, all right, the coat is, will be animated and moving as long as I've got it on. But if I take the coat off and I come out of the coat, the coat falls lifeless to the ground. That's the same way with your body. Uh, if you're, the real you separates from your body, your body becomes lifeless because the spirit you is what's animating the body. And so uh, if I could take the spirit you and stand it up next to your body, your body would be lifeless. And if you could see the spirit you, it would look very similar to the body. And the spirit you would still be thinking, feeling, talking, choosing, seeing, and so on and so forth. We proved that out of Luke chapter 16 uh, when uh, Lazarus, or I'm sorry, the rich man died. And the Bible says he lifted his eyes up in hell. His eyeballs were were in the tomb somewhere because his eyeballs was just the physical organ that he expressed his real eyes through. All right. And he still saw and talked and carried on conversations and all of that all right so we we've we've pretty much established that all right the real you is a spirit being that can think feel and choose and it expresses itself in the body now let's go to second corinthians chapter five second corinthians chapter five all right Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse um, 17. Look at verse 17. All right. Um, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All right. So when we... 
uh, become born again, we become a new creature, or we could say a new creation. Uh, you become a new created being at salvation. Now, uh, where does this take place? Because one of the other things we said, and this is going to lead me into what we're going to get into today, but uh, we said you become a new creation at salvation. Well, then it says old things are passed away, not passing away, but are passed away, past tense, already passed away, and behold, all things have become new, not becoming new, but have become new. So at salvation, you become a new created being, and old things die. Old, The old sin nature, the old uh, desires, sinful desires and sinful ideas and, and sinful tendencies, those things die, all right, and you... All, all things become new. You begin to get new ideas and new desires, and you really it's really God's God ideas and God desires, and you begin to get the uh, you get the nature of God. And so the the sinner man, all right, the sinner man, the liar, the cheater, the alcoholic, so on and so forth, he dies at salvation. And the new man, a righteous man, a man just like God, a man uh, uh, that has the nature of God, the mind of God, the heart of God, a sinless, perfect, righteous man is created at salvation. All right? Remember, Paul said, uh, second, let's see, second Corinthians chapter 2, I think it is, or Second Corinthians chapter 7, somewhere around there, or First Corinthians chapter 7, something like that. He says, writing to the Corinthians, I have harmed no man. I've wronged no man. Now, this is Paul who persecuted the church, killed Christians, threw them in jail. And he says, I've wronged no man. Well, how can he justify that saying? Well, he's the man that killed people. The man that put people in jail died on the road to Damascus when he got converted, right? And now what he's referring to the way Paul's seeing himself, Paul's seeing himself as a new created being, sinless and perfect that's never killed anybody. The person that killed, the person that murdered was died at his conversion, right? Now he's a new created being. And so this is how we've got to see ourselves, all right? So now we're a new created being. We're, we're righteous and we're holy. But now that don't make sense if you don't understand you're a three-part being, Right? Because you look at yourself and you say, wait a minute, I'm a new created being. Old things have passed away, but man, I'm still I'm still uh, having issues in my thinking. I'm still thinking sinfully. I'm still, I still got anger issues, or maybe I'm still desiring things I shouldn't desire. I still end up saying stuff I shouldn't say, doing stuff I shouldn't do. And so, well, uh, I must not be saved, you know. Or we think, well, I must need to go back and get saved again. Or I need to repent and and get back in right standing with God, right? Well, that's because people are only seeing themselves as a two-part being, meaning they're only seeing themselves as a physical being with a soul or a physical being that can think, feel, and choose. But you're not a physical being that can think, feel, and choose. You're a spirit being that can think, feel, and choose, and you function in a physical body. You've got to identify yourself not with just those two parts that you can detect all the time. You've got to identify yourself with that third part of you, the spirit part of you, that you can't detect through your physical senses. You can only see it when you look into the Word of God. You got me? Amen. So now, where did the new creation take place? It didn't take place in your physical body because you can look at your physical body and know you didn't become a new creation in your physical body. It pretty much stayed the same. Now, it may be, have been affected by salvation, okay? Uh, it may be affected by what happened at salvation. You might have got healed. You might feel better, something of that nature, all right? But it didn't become a new creation. You didn't become a new creation in your soul because you understand Man, some of the things I battled with in my mind before I got saved, I'm still battling with now. Some of the feelings I had before I got saved, I have them now. You got me? All right? So the soul didn't become a new creation. All right? It may get affected by the new creation, but it didn't become a new creation. So where did we become a new creation at? 
Where did old things die? And where did, where did all things become new? In your spirit being. Your spirit being. See, when Adam sinned, that sin nature got up into our, uh, the spirit man. Hallelujah. And we, we were born with that sin nature. We were born corrupted. Okay? You didn't become a sinner because you sinned. You became a sinner because you was born. You sinned because you were a sinner already. All right? But now we understand in the new creation at salvation that 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 spirit man that had that corrupted sin nature died and a new spirit man was regenerated and created from the word of God that has the nature of God. Now, the soul and the body didn't get saved. It didn't become a new creation. So, therefore, it still has tendencies to operate in that old nature. Okay? And uh, you'll see, I don't know if this will make sense to you or not, you'll see that people that get saved early, okay, through their Christian walk may battle less with lust and temptation than somebody that's been in it for a while. Got me? And then gets saved later on. Now, why is that? Because their soul and their body is more used to operating in that sin nature. And so now they've got a new nature, and the soul and the body, if not brought under subjection to that new nature or who we are in the spirit, like we taught, taught last week, you know, through turning our mind onto the word and then all that. If they don't do that, their soul and their body is more likely to fall back into that old nature that they're used to operating in. Now, you take somebody that got saved early on, sometimes they, they, they have less tendency to do that because their soul is not used to operating in that sin nature. You got what I'm saying? All right. But now, the new creation, it takes place. This is where we got to understand. The new creation Old things pass away. I become new. I become just like God. I become as righteous as Jesus. And we're going to look at scriptures that show you who you become today. Uh, that happens in the spirit, man, not in the soul and the body. So the soul and the body has to be lined up, all right, uh, brought under subjection to who we are in the spirit, which is uh, who we are in the word. Now, I want you to get this word, a very important word in here. We become a new creature that's the King James. One place says creation. Uh, one translation says creation. One translation says new species of being. Or in other words, when you got saved, you became such a new man, you became something that did not exist up until you got saved. Now, that's powerful. That's how new you are. You're not remodeled. You got me? Hallelujah. You've been reborn. You've been newly created. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So really, uh, until you got saved, you didn't become who you are right now until, until you got born again. Hallelujah. But who you were up until you were born again, passed away, died. That's how we got to see this thing. All right. So you've been created. Now, why is that? Why is that important to understand I'm a creation? Because here's what I've got to understand. All right. If I, if I can get a picture of the fact that I've been created, I can understand then that I'm not, I'm not becoming what God wants me to be. I already am what God wants me to be. In other words, I'm not becoming righteous. I've been created righteous. You got me? I'm not becoming more holy. I've been created holy. You see, you, you getting this? I'm not becoming, I'm not evolving into, into more power. I've been created with all the power I'll ever need. All right. When you understand you're, you're a new creation, when you understand that word created, what you understand is I'm not trying to get anything. I, I've, I've already got it. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm created with it. Hallelujah. Now, the place that I'm evolving is not in my spirit, man. My spirit, man, is full grown. Hallelujah. It's been created just like Christ. It has the mind of Christ. It has all the power of Christ and the, and the wisdom of God and all that stuff. It's fully matured. Now, the place I'm evolving is in my soul. 
and in my words and my actions. I'm, I'm evolving in my understanding of who I already am. I'm evolving in my revelation of who I already am. That's the place I'm evolving. And the more I understand who I am, the more then I can begin to walk out and release who I am. You see. You're not evolving in your spirit. Your spirit man's been created, boom, just, just like Jesus. He's been created righteous, all right? The place I'm evolving then is in my soul. So I don't pray, listen, I don't pray for more power. I don't pray for more wisdom. I don't ask God for more patience. I don't ask God for more love. You got me? What I ask God for is a deeper revelation and understanding of who I already am. You got me? Paul is, uh, turn over to Ephesians because we're going to get in there anyway. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1. Say this with me. I'm not becoming. I've been created. There you go. Hallelujah. Now look. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, if I can see, now here's why I'm saying this. If I can see I've been created, not becoming, but I've been created righteous, not becoming righteous, created holy, not becoming holy, created with all power, not becoming more powerful. What, what this uh, helps me in is uh, it helps me to understand that, and this is easier, this is, a, this is a, just an easier way to live. That I'm not trying to get anything from God. I already have it. All right. Now my purpose is to uh, my Christian endeavor becomes to understand who I am and then release that. It's easier to understand you are already that. You've already been created everything and you just got to release it than to think that you've got to get it from God. It's easier to say I've already got it and now I'm going to just release it than to say I've got to get it I got to do something to get it from God you see and then when you understand you're created everything that you'll ever need to be uh, what it does is it frees you from guilt and condemnation because you know man I ain't got to earn this thing I don't have to deserve this thing I don't have to do anything to get this thing I've been born this way all I had to do was get born again and when I got born again, I got everything. Now, what am I doing? I'm getting a revelation of who I am. I'm evolving in my soul, in my thinking, in my, in my desires, right? And I'm releasing who I am. That's the Christian walk. Not getting anything, understanding who you've already been created to be, and then releasing it, right? And I just want to point out this scripture because this is Paul praying for the church of Ephesus. And, if, and I'm not going to read all this for sake of time. We've got other scriptures to get into. But if you read in Ephesians 1, that whole chapter there, he talks about how uh, he, he talks in the past tense. And he tells them stuff like you're blessed, past tense. You're chosen, past tense. Um, you're redeemed. You're forgiven, past tense. You're, you've got all wisdom and prudence. And he talks about them in the past tense as if it's already done. And then he gets over here in verse 17 and he begins um, to pray for them. And he says in verse 16, uh, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And so what, what does Paul pray there? First he tells them, you're already redeemed. You're already uh, uh, forgiven. You've already got an inheritance. And then he prays for them for what? Revelation, don't he? He prays for them not to get more. He doesn't say, Lord, give them more power. Lord, give them more of an inheritance. Lord, give them more authority. No. He, he prays for them to get a revelation, right, of who they already are. Hallelujah. So we're not evolving in our spirit. We're, we're evolving in the area of our soul. We're already full grown and, and created into everything we need to be in our spirit. All right. Look over in Ephesians chapter 2. Look at, um, look at verse, uh, mm, look at verse 10. 
Luke verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship. And here's that word again, created. Amen. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Look at this. I've been created unto good works, or I've been created with everything I need to do good works. Hallelujah. I've been created with the mind. I've been created with the will. I've been created with the power, the nature, all of which is, 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 is exactly who God is. I've been created with the mind of God, the will of God, the power of God, the nature of God to enable me to do everything I need to do. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to become more of what I need to be so that I can fulfill who I am. No, I've got to get into the revelation and understanding I'm all, I've already been created with everything I'll ever need to be to, to, to do what I need to do. Now I just need to get an understanding of that, get a revelation of all of who I am, hallelujah, and begin to believe that by faith, begin to confess that over myself, begin to, and when the devil comes and tries to tell me something else, come on, amen, uh, you're not that powerful, you're not that able, you don't have all that wisdom, you don't know what to do, you're confused, you're, you're nothing, you're insignificant. That's where I've got to fight back in the area of the soul and say, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're, you're a liar. Because what the devil's referring to is who you are in, in, in your flesh, who you are in the air of your soul and body, and what you can detect through your five physical senses. You've got to take the devil to the word, take him to the mirror, and say, look, look, this is who I really am, and, and hold that mirror up in front of you and let it reflect back to you who the new creation you are in the spirit and begin to fight back in that air of your mind and begin to declare, wait a minute, I'm not weak. I... If, if God is for me, who can be against me? I'm more than a conqueror. And you begin to declare these things. Hallelujah. Because that's who you are. You, you're, you, you're created everything you need to be right now. And, man, you've you got to stand on that. You've got to declare that. You can't back off of that. You can't let the devil move you off of that. You can't let circumstances move you off of that. You've got to stand up. Hallelujah. Now, you can, you can walk around if you want to and, and act defeated and, 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 and be depressed and, and whatever, and, and, and that's fine. But when you manifest depression, when you manifest all of this, this crying, what you, are, what you are displaying or what you are manifesting is that I'm not who the Word says I am, that, that I'm still evolving or I'm still lacking or I'm still becoming. But when you reject, Depression. When you reject, and you say, "I'm not feeling that way," and I'm not, and you smile anyway, and you laugh anyway, and 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 and, and you walk with a victorious uh, countenance anyway. What you're declaring is, "I believe what the Word says about me that I am created in the image of God. That I'm created with all the wisdom I'll ever need. I'm created with all the power I'll ever need." Hallelujah, Amen. And once you do that, Hallelujah that part of you will begin to manifest. The enemy will begin to back up. Hallelujah. Because he's looking for somebody who doesn't believe what the word says that they are through their new birth. That's what he's looking for. And, and when he finds that person, he stays in their house for months. He goes to work with them for months. He messes with them for months. He gets all up in everything with them. Hallelujah. That's his open door. That's his open door. I'm telling you, I, I say this all the time. You're as you're as powerful as your revelation, or you're as limited as your revelation, or you're as unlimited as your revelation of who you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The devil, listen, it ain't the biggest shouters, it ain't the biggest screamers, it ain't the ones that fall on the floor all the time that got the victory. It's the ones that's got a revelation of who they are that walk in victory on a continuous basis when it comes to the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Somebody say this. I'm not becoming. 
I'm, I'm created. Hallelujah. If I'm evolving anywhere, if I'm becoming more righteous anywhere, it's in the area of my soul and my understanding of who I am. Hallelujah. My, my emotions are getting more lined up with who I am. My, my choices are getting more lined up with who I am. My words, my actions are getting more lined up with who I am. But that's the place I'm evolving. But before I can evolve there, I got to see that I've already been created that in my spirit. Does that make sense? You'll never evolve into more righteousness in, in your thinking and in, 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 in your words and your actions until you understand you're already created righteous and holy in your, in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. All right. What, what have we been saying here? Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh, so is he. The way you think about yourself, perceive yourself in your mind, that's, that's what you're going to manifest. Hallelujah. All right. Now. Let's move on to this. Now, religion, especially in the Pentecostal denomination that I, I grew up in, has made salvation a very unsure thing. Amen. How many has thought of their salvation as very unsure? Uh, because it's been preached in such a way that made you feel that you could lose your salvation every other day. Uh, it's been preached in a way that made you feel like you could never really be sure of your salvation or sure that you're ready to go to heaven. Hallelujah. How many still hears that? I still sit here and see it. You better get ready. Are you right with God? You know, uh, get right or get left. Right. We've heard all, we've all heard that. And so every Sunday we run to the altar. We repent of sin in hopes that uh, the Lord doesn't come back before we get to the altar, right? Because if Lord, if he comes back before we get to the altar and get this thing repented, we're going to hell. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how we've thought. Hallelujah. And so we've been in the mindset, you can never be sure if you're ready. You can never be sure if you're righteous. You could never be sure. And you just got to keep making yourself ready and just <clears throat> living in this constant fear and paranoia of, am I ready to go if the trumpet sounds or if Jesus comes back or if the world ends or if I die? Man, I just hope I'm ready. But if you understand spirit, soul, and body, then you understand you don't lose your salvation with every sin you commit. Hallelujah. And you're going to commit sin till the day you die. Jesus did not die to give us a shaky salvation. He died to give us something secure. Hallelujah. He died to give us something you can go to bed with at night in peace knowing. Man, if, if, I, if I quit living tonight, I may go to sleep on, in this world, but I'll wake up with Jesus. You got what I'm saying? This is a sure thing. Look in Ephesians chapter 4. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to show you how sure this thing is. How sin does not mess with your righteousness. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 24. All right. Now, say this. I've been created into everything God wants me to be. All right, now, you've been created. Now, look at this. Look at Ephesians 4 and 24. This is going to describe the new creation that you've become. And it says, and that you put on the new man. Now, who's the new man? The new man is who you've been created into at salvation, right? Now, he's about to describe the new man. Put on the new man, watch this, which after God or that's a way of saying in the likeness of God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Does everybody see that? This scripture describes the new creation you become and it says the new creation you become has been created in the image of God in righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. So what this verse is saying is that who you are in the spirit has been created in the exact image of God. You are as righteous and holy as God in your new created in spirit. 
You're not becoming as righteous as God. You're not becoming as holy as God. You've been created as righteous and as holy as God. Now, the place you're evolving is where? In the soul, in your revelation, in your actions, in your body. But in your spirit, man, you are as righteous and holy as God. Anybody glad about that? Look over at 1 John chapter 4. Come on, hallelujah. We're going to put a whoop on the spirit of condemnation and guilt today. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to slice that demon up with the word of God. 1 John chapter 4, look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Does everybody see that? This says, as Jesus is right now, in a perfect, righteous state. How many believes Jesus is sinless right now? How many believes he's perfect, righteous, whole, healed, in all authority? Come on. Sit next to the Father in the throne room. How many believes he's, that's, that's his condition? Well, this says, as he is, so are we. And it doesn't say, are we going to be in the next world? What's it say? So are we in this world right now i am just like jesus hallelujah whenever i have a issue with my body I, I begin to declare body you are just like the body of jesus jesus's body's healed so is my body you see this now people say well Wait a minute, Sean. You said I asked Jesus this on so my. Well, I don't think so, man. I did some stuff last night. I did some stuff last week. I'm thinking some stuff right now that ain't. I know Jesus ain't thinking it. Come on. I'm feeling some stuff right now towards people that 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 I know Jesus ain't feeling. Well, that's your soul. That's your unredeemed soul and your unredeemed body. That's not what this is talking about. You gotta understand. In your new creative spirit, you're just like Jesus. You're as righteous as Jesus. You're as holy as Jesus. In your spirit right now, you are in the throne room of heaven with Jesus. Folks, heaven, sometimes we sing songs about heaven coming down, or, or come down heaven, heaven come. Heaven came down, folks. It came down. It's in us. The glory's in us. The open heaven, the windows are open. They've opened up. And they're in us. Hallelujah. And now I can take my mind, my soul, and I can take my body into where my spirit's already at. And we do that through the avenues and the tools of worship and, and, and the word and, and, and prayer and things of that nature. And I can release heaven out of me through my praise and through the prophetic and through laying on of hands and through ministering in song and preaching, I can release heaven out of me. But folks, my spirit man is just like Jesus right now. I'm as righteous as Jesus. I'm as holy as Jesus. I'm in the presence of God just like Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You got this? Thank you, Jesus. Now, look look back. I, I apologize for having to turn all these scriptures. Look back. In um, uh, with me in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go back there. All right. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say this. As Jesus is, so am I right now. <laughs> Woo, take that, devil. Come on. Amen. The devil comes along. Oh, you're old. You wimp. You... You you little, you know, worthless, no good for nothing. You can't figure nothing out. You can't do. No, you got to look at the enemy and say, devil, as Jesus is right now, so am I in this in this world. And you got to refuse to believe anything else but that. Right? Well, there ain't no evidence to that. Yeah, you got faith is the evidence of things not seen. You don't need natural evidence to tell you that this is true you've got faith 
Faith is your evidence. If you believe it, what faith, folks, I don't know why I'm saying this, but if you've got faith in the, in the word, what faith tells you is that whether I can see it or not, it's there. It's true. It's reality. You got what I'm saying? Hallelujah. That's what faith is. It's the evidence of things not seen. Right? Hallelujah. And so you got to stand on this thing. Hallelujah. All right, look back at Ephesians chapter 1. Look at this. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Everybody say heavenly places. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he set him at his right hand in heavenly places. Well, he's getting ready in the next verse to describe where heavenly places is at. Well, verse 21 says, it's far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Well, that covers everything, don't it? And hath put all things, so everybody say all things. Oh, hallelujah. He's put all things under his feet. Now, where is heavenly places where Jesus is seated, seat, seated right now? It's far above every. It's a place, listen, it's a place of total dominion, total authority, and total power. You got me? There ain't a king. There ain't a government. There ain't an army. There ain't a disease. There ain't anything with a name that's above overpowering Jesus right now. You got me? Well, that's great for Jesus. What about me? Well, look over here. Look at verse uh, 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, made us alive with Christ, by grace you're saved, and hath, that's past tense, ain't it? That's not future to come when we die. This is right now, hath raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, where are we seated? Where are we seated? We're seated in heavenly places. Where's heavenly places? It's where Christ is seated above all things. Are you following what I'm saying? As Jesus is, so am I. When I was born again, in my new created spirit, my new created spirit, man, listen, folks, my new created spirit, man, sat down next to Christ in a position of total power and authority and dominion over all things. Woo. You got me? See, folks, I'm not going to heaven. I'm already there. You hear me? I'm not waiting to get to heaven when I die. I'm already there. My soul and my body will catch up one day with where my spirit man already is. So now, I'm, watch this. Here's what I got to understand. I'm in the earth, but I'm operating from a heavenly place. Man, hallelujah. You got this? I may be in the earth. I may be in a cursed world. I may be in a world where there's circumstances, where there's diseases, where there's problems, where there's issues, where there's a demonic force attacking on the left and, and all this stuff. But I've got to understand, hallelujah, it, that doesn't dictate to me who I am or where I am. Hallelujah. I have to understand that even though I'm in the midst of all of that, in my new created spirit, hallelujah, the new created born again man that I am is operating from a heavenly place where all things are under my feet. All things must obey what I say. All things must bow down, come on, to my new name, my new family name, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You got me? Hallelujah. You see this? See, listen to me. All that stuff, circumstances, how my body feels, what's going on in my mind, all that, that may dictate to me my condition but it doesn't dictate to me my position my condition may be one thing but my position is another you follow what i'm saying hallelujah and here's what i've got to get here's what i've got to understand i got to quit letting my condition dictate to me what my position is 
you know, I got to quit letting what's going on in my soul and in my body and around me dictate to me and tell me, well, you're not righteous. Well, you're, you, you know, you're not worthy. Uh, you ain't got no power. Uh, you, you're just, you're just, you're, you're, you're about to go down. I, that's my condition. That's not my position. And I've got to understand my condition doesn't dictate to me my position. Even though my condition may be one thing, my position is still, I'm seated in heavenly places. And as much as I'll believe that, you got me? As much as I'll stand on that, and as much as I will, watch this, let me hear what I'm about to say. As much as I will speak and act from my position and not my condition, I can change my condition. You hear what I'm saying? Just because my condition is one thing doesn't mean I'm not the righteousness of God. doesn't mean I don't have all power and authority. It doesn't mean I'm not seated with Christ in heavenly places. But what's happening is I'm letting my condition speak to me about my position, and I'm accepting my condition and saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in total victory. I, I don't have much power. I, I, I am weak. I'm not worthy. Man, I need to start getting over here and seeing my position and meditating on my position and quit speaking from my condition and start speaking from my position. When I speak from my position, you know what I do? I tell my condition to change. I speak. When I'm speaking from my position, I tell mountains to move. When I'm speaking from my position, I tell demons to get out of my house. When I'm speaking from my position... Hallelujah. I tell depression and fear to go. And I begin to laugh by faith. I begin to smile by faith until it ain't by faith no more. It starts to bubble up out of me. You follow what I'm saying? So you follow me. I got I, I to gotta, I gotta quit coming to God and, and facing life from my condition and start facing life from my position. And if I could do that, I'll change my condition. Does everybody see that? Oh, as Jesus is. So am I in my new created spirit, man, right? All right, All right y'all still, got, still with me? You, you, got, you got a little more time here? Go with me some more. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, real quick. Come on. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. This is who I've been created into. Hebrews chapter 12. Look at verse 23. Come on. Hallelujah. Folks, this says it right here. If there's a scripture that says that you're perfect in, in or that you're righteous in your new created spirit, this is it right here. I mean, you can't get no, you can't mess this up. It'd take a religious teacher to, to twist this in your mind to, to mess this up. Look at this. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. The spirits of justified men are made what? Perfect. You hear that? How many is justified in here? I'm justified. If you believe in Jesus, you've been justified. Well, it says the spirits of just men are made perfect. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to this verse, thank you, Jesus, uh, in my new created spirit, I am perfect. I'm as perfect, I'm as righteous, I'm as holy as God. And that says, been made. Does everybody see that? Made perfect. Not becoming perfect, but made perfect. So when you got born again, your spirit was created, hallelujah, and it became perfect just like Jesus. Hallelujah. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on. You got to put your eyes on this stuff. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at verse 17. Look at this. And then we got to hit Ephesians one more time. Why well, Ephesians is powerful, ain't it? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter six. Look at verse seventeen. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Does everybody see that? 
if I'm joined to the Lord, I'm one spirit with the Lord. So according to this verse, the Lord, hallelujah, the Lord and my spirit is one or exactly the same. You see that? My spirit is one with the Lord's spirit. So if we're one, aren't we the same? Aren't we the same? Hallelujah. I'm exactly like God in my spirit, man. Look over in Ephesians chapter 1 now. Ephesians chapter 1. Let me show you this. All right. Somebody say, my righteousness is not unsure. It's a very sure thing. Oh, hallelujah. Salvation is a very sure thing. Ephesians chapter 1. Look at this. All right. Look at verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. Now watch this. What this is saying is, this is what happened after you heard the word and after you believed. So after you got, right after you got saved, right after you got born again, Watch this. Right after you became a new creation in your spirit, man, right after you was created in the image of God and you became as righteous as God, you became as holy as God, you became just like Jesus, hallelujah, you got all of his nature, you got all of his power, you got all of his authority. After you became one with the Lord, after you sat down in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, watch what happened. Watch what happened, verse 13. You were sealed. Somebody say, I've been sealed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Does everybody see that? So after all of this happened to your new created spirit, after it became righteous and exactly like God, it was sealed up by the Holy Spirit. The word sealed, when you look it up in the Greek, that it's uh, translated from, it means two things. It means to be marked or stamped as somebody's property. God's marked you with the Holy Ghost. You belong to him now. Amen. But it also means to preserve and keep. Like the seal on a can of preserves. Right? My grandma uh, used to uh, grow a garden. They would preserve. They'd have preserves. They'd preserve um, uh, beets and and, and, and jams and just different things they'd preserve and they put that seal on it and, and what that seal did, watch this, the seal, hear me please, the seal keeps all the impurities out of that, uh, of that fruit or, or that, that, that thing that they put in the jar. The seal keeps all the impurities out that could contaminate and ruin uh, the, the, the food. All the, the contaminants in the air that could get in there and ruin the food, the seal keeps it out. Does everybody see that? Hallelujah. Folks, your new created man has been created in the image of God and then it was sealed by the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? That means sin, listen to me, sin may be able to get into my mind. Sin may be able to get into my emotions. Sin may be able to get into my body and my words and my actions. It may even be all around me, but it cannot break the seal of the Holy Ghost and get into my new born again spirit and contaminate my spirit. Oh, hallelujah. This is powerful. My righteousness is a sure thing. I'm going to heaven surely. Hallelujah. I'm already there. Matter of fact. Hallelujah. And sin may be able, like I said, I may think sinful thoughts. I may have sinful emotions on the inside of me. Hallelujah. But that sin cannot contaminate the righteous state or position of my spirit. Because it's been sealed up by the Holy Ghost. You got me? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got to hear this. So what does that mean? We just go ahead and live in sin if you want to. But I don't think you want to because that new man in you has a new nature. Are you following me? And then here's the thing. Sin may not mess with your position 
It may not contaminate your right to stay, but it will mess with the condition and quality of your life. Because sin is an open road to Satan and his demons and sickness and disease and all that stuff. So just because of that, if you want a good quality of life, you want to live sin free. You follow what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But I'm telling you the only way to deal with your sin with, with sin in the soul and in the body is to begin to meditate on who you are in Christ. You follow what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But man, I'm so glad. Whew. Hallelujah, because I ain't got it all together. I don't keep it straight. None of y'all keep it straight. Come on, amen. We need to take the super C, you know, the the C, like the Superman. We need to take that off of our chest because there's no super Christians. Hallelujah. We mess up. But praise God, the righteousness that I am in my spirit, the newborn again man that I am, he's been sealed by the Holy Ghost and can't be contaminated. How long does this seal last? Look over in in First John chapter three, I think. So when you look, 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 come on. So listen, it's a, it's a trick of the devil to get you worried about losing your salvation. Why? Because he wants you to focus on that. He wants you to focus on sin. He wants you to focus on your mistakes. He wants you to focus on repenting every week and getting it right. Why? Because if you do that, you'll never focus on your assignment. You'll never focus on what God has called you to do. If you're always focusing on keeping yourself right and keeping yourself ready, you'll never think about anything else. Hallelujah. You follow what I'm saying? People are in that cycle. But if I can go ahead and get convinced that I'm the righteousness of God in my new created born again spirit and that's sealed by the Holy Ghost and can never be contaminated, I can move on to better things. Come on, amen. I can move beyond salvation. Come on, we need to move beyond salvation. But we can't move beyond salvation if we don't understand, hallelujah, what has happened to us through our new born again experience. Now, how long am I sealed for? Look in, uh, I think we need to go here. First John chapter, no, I don't want to go to first John chapter three. Hold on a minute. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Look, just, just, I'm telling you, man. Look, look in Ephesians four. I'm sorry, I told you to turn to first John. Ephesians four. Ephesians four, look at verse 30. Look at this. Ephesians four, verse 30. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm about to kick the devil right in the face right here. Hallelujah. Ephesians four, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And basically what that's saying is, you know, uh, listen what the Holy Spirit says. Why? Because if you grieve, it ain't going to be good for you because it's going to mess with your quality of life. The Holy Spirit's in you to show you, the, to make the right decisions and so on and so forth. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Watch this. Whereby you are sealed unto what? The day of redemption. Now, what is the day of redemption? Listen to me. Hear me, please. Listen. You are one-third redeemed right now. And what part of you got redeemed? The spirit. Your soul and body is waiting on redemption. And you're going to get a new soul and a new body when Jesus comes back. But... The spirit man that's been redeemed, the spirit man that's been created new, he's sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption or until Jesus comes back. Praise God. Hallelujah. How long am I sealed? How, how long is my righteousness sealed? How long am I protected? Hallelujah. From sin. And how long am I going to go uncontaminated by sin? Uncontaminated. Hallelujah. By unrighteousness. How long can I stay in this righteous condition till the Lord comes back? Oh, man, that's about as sure as you can get, ain't it? I'm, the Holy Ghost is going to seal me up. Amen? Until Jesus comes back. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's sealing me up until Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Whoo. Now, I'm debating on whether I should, I, I, I don't think I'll have to save this. Let me skip that. I'll save that for next week. And let me, let me end with this. Let me end with this. All right. All right. Now, 
through the new creation. There's something I'm telling you. Something I skipped over here for sake of time. Very important. So, man, we're gonna get it next time around. Hallelujah. I don't want to leave off of that, but I, I just don't have I don't have time to just get really get into that and look at that and explain that. But I want you to see something, man. When God let let's since we're in Ephesians four, look look back at verse twenty four real quick. As I want I want you to get a picture of this and the power of the blood. Okay. It says, and that you put on the new man, which after God, we said that means in the likeness of God, right? In the image of God is created in righteousness and true holiness. All right. When God, when you got born again and you became a new creation, God created you in his image. That newborn again spirit. What was God doing through the new the new birth? Well, God was taking you back to the beginning, to His original plan before the fall. Why? Because when He created Adam, He created Adam in His image, and He created Adam. You know we. He created Adam with his word. He didn't create Adam any different. I know it says, you know, he formed him with his hands and breathed life into him and stuff. Let me tell you something. He didn't he didn't create Adam any different than he created the rest of creation. He created it with his word. Genesis one twenty six when he said let us, make, let us make man in our image. When he said that, man was created. Man the first man, Adam, was created from the seed of the word of God. And he was formed in God's image. Well, folks, my new created spirit has been created by the seed of the word of God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says, You're not born again of corruptible seed, man's seed, but incorruptible seed, the word of God. Right? So guess what? I came from the same word. I came from the same seed that the first Adam came from. And I became the image of God. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Hallelujah. God went back to the beginning. All right. And recreated us in his image from his word, just like the first Adam. But watch this. This time, I'm going to close with this. This time, it everything was fixed. Everything was took care of. When God created the first man from from the seed of His Word, and He was created in God's image, Hallelujah! Ah, uh, it wasn't as sure as it is now. Why? Because Jesus had not shed His blood for sin. Jesus hadn't come yet. Jesus was was a plan. He was a prophetic word. He hadn't manifested yet. So when Adam sinned, because, you know, this was the beginning. Adam sinned. Sin came in and corrupted the new creation. You got me? Come on with me. But now Jesus has shed his blood for that sin. (laughs) <laughs> come on Jesus has shed his blood for that sin Jesus has paid for sin so now God went back and said alright I'm going to do it again first he did it with Jesus come on Jesus came from a virgin he didn't come from a man he came from the he was the word manifested in the flesh he started with Jesus then Jesus fixed the sin problem, shed his blood and paid for all of sin for all of time. And then God says, now I'm going to recreate again. 
and we were born again from the seed of the word of God. But here's the, just like the first Adam, we were created in the image of God. But here's the difference between us and Adam. Adam could get corrupted because there was no blood, there was no cross, there was no Jesus. But us, hallelujah, and our new creation, hallelujah, we cannot be contaminated. Why? Because there's been blood, there's been a cross, there's been Jesus, sin's been paid for, it's been dealt with. So the sin that could corrupt corrupt Adam and his new creation cannot corrupt us and our new creation. Woo, hallelujah. I'm sealed. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I'm sealed. Why? Because, it's because of the blood. Because of the blood of Jesus and the work of the cross. Adam and his creation got contaminated, but this creation can't get contaminated. Because sin's been paid for. Sin's been dealt with. I'm, come on. I'm, I'm covered by the blood. You got me? I'm covered by the blood. Woo, hallelujah. Adam was covered by animal skins. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Folks, hallelujah. You are as sure heaven right now. You're as sure heaven right now as if you're standing in it. Hallelujah. Because in your new creative spirit, you are. Hallelujah. You're as righteous as God. You're as, you're as holy as God. Hallelujah. You, you have all of the power of God. You're just like Jesus right now. You're seated at the right hand of the Father. You're above all things. Everything's under your feet. If it's got a name, it's under you. Cancer's got a name, it's under you. Poverty's got, a, that's a name, it's under you. Divorce, that's a name, it's under you. Right? Hallelujah. Homosexuality is a name, it's under you. Hallelujah. If it's got a name, it's under you. It's under your feet. That's who you are. And then all of that has been sealed up by the Holy Ghost, and it ain't changing. And your condition don't change it. Sin can't get in there and contaminate it and corrupt it. Hallelujah. I'm as righteous as I'm ever going to be at salvation. And today, years later, I'm no less righteous than I was then. I'm no more righteous. I'm as righteous as I need to be and ever will be. I was created that way and sealed up by the Holy Ghost. Whew, hallelujah. Bring your best, devil. Because my righteousness is impenetrable. My worthiness is impenetrable. My victory, impenetrable. Hallelujah. God Almighty. If you can break the seal of the Holy Ghost, then you can move me out of the throne room of God. You can move me out of my place. Whew, hallelujah. If you can break through the blood of Jesus. If you could break past, you know, they sang them old, the old saints, she's saying the song, he, he, he can't cross the bloodline. You got me? Man, if you can penetrate the blood, if you can penetrate the Holy Ghost, you can penetrate my righteousness. You can penetrate my, my healing. You can penetrate my health. You can penetrate my provision. You can penetrate my blessed state. But if you can't penetrate the seal of the Holy Spirit, if you can't penetrate the blood, you, you, you can't touch my righteousness. And if you can't touch my righteousness, then you can't keep me down. You can't beat me. You can't beat on me. You can't hold me down. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And it ain't about what I've done. It ain't about what's going on in my unredeemed body and soul. It's about what Jesus has done and what the word has said. Now, it's up to you whether you want to believe what you feel and what you see and what the devil's saying and believe your condition or you want to go to the word of God and believe the word. That's totally up to you. And as much as you'll believe what the word says about you, you'll manifest that, walk that out, and you'll walk in victory and, and, and you'll dominate the enemy and, and you'll win every battle and every, you, you'll come out. Now, but if you want to just meditate on your condition and believe that and, and refuse to believe of what the word says about you then you'll stay in this continuous overwhelmed up and down mountain valley mountain valley Christianity walk 
Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's just all about how you want to see yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> well, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For today, we thank you, Lord, for your uh, your blessings, Lord. We thank you, Lord.